Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Christine Negra, and I'll be moderating this Finance in Common high-level event on financing sustainable food systems, public development banks as catalysts of new investment models. The world is waking up to the global importance of the agri-food sector and its huge significance for livelihoods, its large environmental footprint, and its massive untapped, and untapped business potential. We know that this sector faces significant challenges, including that small-scale farmers and small and medium-sized agri-enterprises have poor access to finance. For example, of total global climate finance flows, small-scale farmers receive only 1.7%, uh, despite their disproportionate vulnerability to climate change and their critical contribution to global food security. So, to step up to the ambitious transformation that's been called for in the 2030 Agenda and in the Paris Agreement, public development banks operating in the agri-food sector will need to mobilize more finance, tap new sources, and innovate their investment models, all while including more fully the sustainable, de sustainable development impact into their risk return calculation. So our purpose today is to learn about high potential investment models spearheaded by public development banks to mobilize public and private finance towards green and resilient agri-food systems. To address this, we are fortunate to have with us three panelists who represent public development banks, as well as farmers organizations who bring significant experience in the agri-food sector. We have Mr. Maman Lawal Mossi, who is the Director General of the Agricultural Bank of Niger. We have Mr. Zhang Wenkai, who is Vice President of the Agricultural Development Bank of China. And we have Ms. Estrella Penunya, who is Secretary General of the Asian Farmers Association for Sustainable Rural Development. The culmination of this session will be a short address by Mr. Gilbert Hongbo, President of the International Fund for Agri Agricultural Development, who will share the vision outlined in the joint statement of the Finance in Common Agriculture and Rural Development Cluster. And he will fill us in on the next steps towards deeper collaboration for financial inclusion and risk mitigation in the agri-food sector. So this is a brief session, so let's jump right into our panel and begin with the first question. Where we'll begin is noting that each of the institutions represented here has been innovating in many ways to drive finance toward more sustainable and inclusive outcomes in the agri-food sector. So beginning with Mr. Mossi, could I ask you to share with us any of the specific successes that your institution has had in testing new approaches to delivering on your mandate? And if you can, why you think it was successful? Mr. Mossi, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, good morning. I want to say, first of all, that my country, Niger, presents at least the most defavorable picture in terms of access to financial services in sub-African region, according to all available indicators. In spite of efforts made by Niger government and other people to facilitate the role in particular of small farmers and rural producers, we have no access to financial services. Why our bank, Agricultural Bank of Niger, has been created 10 years ago. What we did from our creation is to try to have innovative financial models. We are we have a internal service which are trying to implement innovative 
uh, models to uh, facilitate the access financial uh, services to the young, the women, and the poor people. To do this, we contract an agreement with um, some of uh, PTF. Namely, we have a huge project in Doso. It's a region of Niger, which is uh, um, at uh, 100 kilometers from Niamey's capital. Um, what we say that we have three points, uh, principal points. If you want to facilitate the access to producer, we have to, they have to be, um, they have to be formed. They have to learn how to produce, uh, how to manage their farms, how to produce, how to get to markets. So we have in the first step to enroll women, young men and women, and uh, and give them appropriate uh, learning how to produce, how to get market, and how to to manage their small enterprises. This is the one point. The second point is how to uh, make them reach market. If there is no market, they cannot sell and they cannot pay back what uh, we uh, what they borrowed from. The second, the third point is we have to uh, make them um, reach a certain point. Uh, with subsidiaries, um, specifically to young women, young boys, and poor people have difficulties to access to land. They have difficulties to secure their land, their farms. They have uh, perhaps uh, difficulties to make the first investment to have to, to make their uh, business um, bankable. So with our partner, Lix Development, the, uh, the third point is to give them subsidiaries to be able to come on market. So if I say we have to, to teach them how to, to produce, teach them how to reach markets, facilitate market and even give them some small subsidiaries which can they can move from subsistence production to market production. This, that's in, really that's I'm gonna break in because I want to make sure we we move on to our other panelists for this question. But I think the key things I heard there is investing in in learning and making sure that people are set up for success. And, and moving down the path towards commercialization to enable repayment. Yes. So, so those are some really critical pieces. Let's let's turn to our, our next panelist, Mrs. Penunya. Any specific successes in testing new approaches through the work that you've been doing, either through your own institution or through the institutions that you partner with? And, and any keys to the success of those? Please, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Christina, and hello, good morning, and good afternoon from Manila, Philippines. Yes, let us share with you four initiatives at the national level. First, our member in Cambodia, FNN, organizing, organizes savings and credit groups in each of the covered commune level associations. And at the national level, they are able to pull their resources from the institutional and reserve funds of these associations. When these pooled resources are enough, they distribute a specified amount to one district for its business plan. Like in the past years, it was able to finance the establishment of a district rice meal cooperative. Second, our member in Vietnam, PNFU, is managing a supporting fund for farmers. The funds have been sourced through loans from the government's agriculture bank, and VNFU serves as the guarantor for the farmers' groups. 
It currently lands in the form of a household group project with a minimum of 10 households per, per group to produce and trade one product and service. And currently, the fund has given a loan to 14,323 groups covering 2.6 million farmers. Third, the Global Agriculture Food Security Program, or GAFSP, initiated a Missing Middle Initiative, or MMI, providing direct grants to producer organizations. And one of the recipients of this grant are the 55 member FOs in Bangladesh. With the technical assistance of FAO Bangladesh, the groups were able to get an agriculture and rural credit policy from the Agriculture Credit Division of Bangladesh Bank, advising national commercial banks to work with the farmers organizations and these commercial banks consider the social capital of producer organizations and agriculture cooperatives as collateral. Fourth, our current our member in India has a cooperative bank for its members, mostly self-employed women. It was established in 1974 under the dual control of the Reserve Bank of India and the Gujarat state government. So the bank, the Sewa Bank, is owned by the members because it's a cooperative, and this cooperative bank provides a whole gamut of financial services from savings, loans, pensions, fixed deposits, and insurance. So very quickly, what are the success factors? First, there is a policy from the state bank, such as in Bangladesh and Vietnam. Second, there is a good push not only from the farmers' organizations, but also from their partners, such as FAO. And third, there are strong FOs and producer organizations and cooperatives who are able to consolidate the voice and the wealth of its members, are able to have good financial and organizational management through hiring of professional staff. All these FOs I mentioned earlier have professional staff but are governed by farmer leaders. And corollary to this, there are development partners that support the capacity building efforts of FOs to engage in policy work and deliver economic services, such as the IFAD support to our organization through the MTCP2 and AFOS. Thank you. That's wonderful. And I think you gave us some different geographies and you gave us some really different pieces of the puzzle being pulled together. Everything from local resources being used effectively in a pooled way to leveraging international resources and other, other functions. So I think you've given us quite a few examples of innovation. That's fantastic. So let's turn to our third panelist, Mr. Wenkai. Specific successes, testing new approaches. Your institution's very large. You've probably tested a lot of different things. What's one specific success that you feel has been a source of innovation that, that and, and tell us why you think it was successful? Please, Mr. Wenkai. Thank you, uh, Christine. I hope uh, you can hear my voice. Uh, Very well. Hello. Okay, so, uh, you know, the Agricultural Development Bank of China uh, has a clear mandate from the very beginning. Uh, the bank was set up uh, back to 1994. Uh, uh, the bank uh, mandates to support uh, development agenda for agriculture, rural areas, and the farmers. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a government owned bank, fully by the, owned by the government. I think uh, it's uh, a very beginning. Uh, the ADBC, the Corporate Development China, Bank of China, has been uh, providing the financial services for the nation, national food security, uh, poverty alleviation, rural uh, revitalization, rural infrastructure development, and uh, 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 agriculture modernization program, and rural urban integration, among many others. So. Uh, as a policy bank, and uh, the ADBC has been aligned uh, priority operations very closely with the government priorities. And also, uh, 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 the bank has been uh, supporting the, the weak area, weak links, uh, particularly in the agriculture and the rural areas. Uh, the bank has uh, obtained uh, uh, strong support from the government at all levels, uh, from top to the to local government level. So, and uh, uh, I, I can give an example, uh, in the area of the poverty nation program, the banks has done a lot of projects in, uh, in the whole countries. And uh, with a total of outstanding loan uh, balance of about uh, 1.5 trillion Chinese yuan so far. So we, the bank has really done great uh, success in uh, helping the, the government achieve the, the poverty nation uh, program, national program. Uh, as you may know, by the end of this year, the government will alleviate, eradicate all the people, uh, absolute poverty uh, by the end of the year. 
So this is a huge program for, for the whole country. And uh, I think this is a very important one, I want to say at the very beginning. Of course, secondly, ADBC also enjoy very close uh, coordination, cooperation, and, and partnership with, with, with government, enterprises, social, uh, private capital, uh, 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 among others, and other commercial financial institutions also. Uh, this is also uh, a very unique uh, uh, you know, uh, characteristic for the bank. So because we, we have a nationwide network, we enjoy such a great uh, partnership with all the important players. So I think we, we are, that has put ADBC in a very unique position to play, to focus on uh, its, its mandate. Thirdly, ADBC also has developed a very comprehensive and uh, uh, integrated business model uh, 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 or business uh, approaches. Uh, ADBC support both a physical side, a physical infrastructure, and also social infrastructure, uh, such as road, you know, rural area, water supply, but also a health, education, other social sector project. And, uh, and the ADBC supports you know, the rural area uh, project, but at the same time, the bank also supports rural urban integration, uh, particularly supported uh, urbanization uh, uh, process. In, in the country. So this is also very unique. The bank uh, supports uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, purchase and reserve of the, of the grain, cotton, edible, oil, and other agricultural products. But at the same time, you know, the bank's moving uh, into more support for the, for the production, processing, marketing, you know, logistic, uh, what we call the, the whole industry chain of agricultural products. So that's also very unique. And uh, firstly, I want to see that, uh, what I want to say is that the ADBC also uh, got uh, a huge uh, uh, amount of financial resources from the, from the bond market. I, I think uh, now, I think this year we are going to issue the, the bond in the both, uh, you know, bond market, both from China and, and, uh, and the overseas market. Uh, about like uh, you know 1.5 trillion Chinese yuan. Uh, 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 you know this is uh, about more than maybe two 200 billion uh, US dollars uh, of, of the of the bond. So we we got a lot of funding support from both Chinese investors and also the investor from from abroad. So this is also this is really uh, uh, gave the uh, put the ADBC in very strong position to provide a lot of support, particularly for this year when we have the uh, COVID-19 and also the, the huge challenge for the, for the economic recovery. So I think my bank has really uh, set uh, uh, great efforts to provide a lot of lending uh, operations for, for the, for the, for the, uh, in China. Uh, so and also finally, I want to see that ADBC also over the years, uh, you know, uh, increase the support for the green development more uh, green project uh, and also more project uh, which can support uh, climate financing. So of course we, we may maybe later a second session I will talk about the challenges we may face in this area but of course we are moving in that direction. So I think uh, I, I, we, we issued a, a green bond uh, in, the, in the bond market also so that uh, we, we, we use the green bond, we use the proceeds from issuing that a green bond to finance the, uh, specifically the, the green project. Uh, in, 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 in many parts of, of China. So I think uh, those are the, uh, maybe a uh, successful story I, I want to share uh, with my, my colleagues. So maybe right now, I, uh, maybe later we can talk more about uh, challenges and maybe other things for the maybe more uh, cooperation uh, at the global and the regional uh, and you know, at regional level. Perfect. Thank you. That's wonderful. But you covered a lot of terrain and you also anticipated my next question. I did want to emphasize though that one of the first things you mentioned was supporting the weak links. And I think that targeting and looking at that integrated approach is something that I'm taking away from your comments as a piece of the innovation and the approach that, you, that you're using. But let's let's move on to our second question. And the, the world we're living in, there's a lot of global crises that have stimulated a lot of international commitments to tackle climate change, sustainable development, et cetera. So in region financial institutions, public development banks have been called on, in addition to their pre-existing mandates, to contribute to achieving these international commitments, right? So, so your institutions are being asked to take on, uh, and your partners are being asked to take on an even more, a more ambitious mandate. 
So given that the kind of growing pressure to integrate uh, green and resilience and sustainable development at even a kind of with greater urgency, what are some of the challenges that you've encountered in taking on that more ambitious mandate? And what are some of the critical needs that you feel can be addressed in a collaborative multi-actor mode like through an initiative such as Financing Common. So, so again, let me start with Mr. Mosi, if I can. What challenges in the new context, in this evolving context, and, and what do you see as the opportunity with Financing Common? Over to you. Um, thank you. Um, there is, in desertical countries such as mine, there is um, important constraints, which we can be a, Namely, people are illiterate. They don't know even what is climate change. We have to uh, reinforce their capacity to, to be able to see what our um, production system have on uh, climate change, why we have to, to change our mind, to change our way of production, to, to change our way of conception, to meet these different goals. So the first point is we need international community to, to accompany us in terms of uh, reinforcement, education to poor uh, people who uh, didn't know what is climate change. We have, uh, we are, we need support to uh, have appropriate way of production. That is very, very cost costly because if we we have to change our process, we have to invest more. We have to uh, perhaps. Uh, um, adopt new techniques and uh, adopt innovative way of production. But for this, we have to invest. And if we have to invest, we need resources. We, uh, if we have, um, uh, we, need, we need resources, we have to um, work together with international uh, PTF to, to make sure that Every producer in Niger uh, know what uh, is his production impact on climate change. If we are, um, if we did, if we um, achieve this goal, it's uh, an important step because uh, if we are um, talking to rural poor, they can say that um, ten years ago we have. Um, our uh, climate is like this, but now there is mm, no much rainfall, there are inund inundation, but they don't do the link between the behavior and the climate change. We need assistance to, to, to you know, I think I want to move, I want to move, but I think what I'm hearing is that you're really saying the bank can do a lot, but it can't do everything. And this, this education and capacity building for yes, capacity farming really communities deep. really needs that reinforcement from the larger international community. And I think that, 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 that's something that makes a lot of sense. So let's move to Mrs. Panunya and ask her, um, her view, if we can, about challenges encountered in this sort of increasing urgency context. And, and where do you see the opportunity in the finance in common type of initiative? Yeah, uh, thank you for this apt question. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that AFA, as a regional level family farmers organizations, we are committed to respond to the climate crisis and to contribute to the SDGs and within the framework of the United Nations Decade of Family Farming, because we believe that the effective implementation of the UNDFF will accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. AFA promotes rights to natural resources, climate resilient agriculture, family farmers, cooperatives and their enterprises. 
women farmer empowerment and attracting the youth to agriculture. And this we believe are all important in sustainable development and in transforming food systems. So we think we are up to the challenge. In terms of financing, our need is in concrete policies and programs and investments in climate resilient agriculture, especially supporting the transitions to integrated, diversified, organic agroecological farming systems and supporting stronger involvement of family farmers in the value chain. And that means supporting also investing in the organiz in organizing farmers into commodity clusters, cooperatives, farmer companies at local, national, and regional levels. And this also means investing in the capacities of farmers, as the previous speaker has said, uh, and, and to, to do capacity building in networking and partnership with other stakeholders so that when we come with the banks and with the government, we will feel that we are equal partners and we are ready to make our own, our own contributions. But the challenge is basically we think how these finances can really reach the small scale farmers, can transform them from mere recipients to active partners in the design and implementation of these investment projects so that we can increase the chances that the projects are relevant, appropriate and doable at the field level. Let me tell you our hopes, our hopes. We will soon be implementing a project called ARISE or Assuring Resiliency of Family Farmers Against COVID with support from EFADS, Rural Poor Stimulus Facility. Built in that proposal is a revolving fund for national FOs so that even after the project life, the national FOs can be able to provide emergency loans to members come another disaster. We know that many revolving funds have failed in the past. So what we are doing now in this project is to have competent business development officers at both national and regional levels and several capacity building activities, both online and offline, on business planning and feasibility studies and immediate monitoring or, or of results so that we can fail fast and learn faster. Also in 2017, AFA initiated the concept of establishing a trust fund, which will be a big amount and only an, a certain, uh, the annual interest of this amount can be used to deliver economic services to farmer members and partners. We have never gotten to initial planning because we felt we needed professional staff or volunteers, especially those with banking expertise to help us. Mm. In the Philippines, we had several NGOs who provide grants and loans now to other NGOs because they were successful in debt swaps or peace bonds. So right now we're hearing climate bonds, green bonds, climate insurance at country and regional level. We hope we could be in discussion with you on these things because these are also important to us. And we want to be an equal partner in these discussions. Thank you very much. That's a really clear point about this. How do you continue to innovate and learn from one another, from different public development banks and others, about how to really further integrate sustainable development and climate resilience? So I think that's a really, really clear point. Mr. Wankai, we'd love to hear from you in terms of the challenges and, and also what you see as the, the big opportunity from your institution's perspective uh, in working through the Finance and Common uh, Agriculture and Rural Development Cluster. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, I, we, 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 we did uh, face some challenges. Of so, course, we already uh, encountered some challenges uh, I, I, as we uh, scale up our uh, operations uh, in the future. Of course, one thing, is, uh, the first challenge we face is as we uh, uh, step our uh, 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 even further expand our operations, how, how we how man managing the, the, the risk, uh, for the, how can we further improve the quality of our portfolio. And, uh, you know, this is a challenge maybe not only for us, but also for many other financial institutions uh, these days. So uh, the, the agriculture sector is a sector, right, very important one, but also relatively uh, with higher risk and uh, vulnerable to the climate change and natural disaster. And uh, and also uh, also vulnerable to the market uh, price uh, volatility, right? And quarter product price also uh, not so stable or very often. So how you know? And also we see that uh, as we do the lending, many of our clients in a rural area, like uh, you know, they don't have uh, uh, enough uh, uh, collateral resources, right? For you know, so uh, so for, for for borrowing from from the bank. So these are the challenges, uh, particularly this year uh, with the start of, with this uh, COVID-19. I see many 
uh, uh, enterprises in your rural area, you know, uh, they face even more challenges. So uh, this is something, you know, for us, uh, we, we needed to think. Uh, as a policy bank, we try to provide the uh, loan with a, with a lower rate, very concessional uh, rate of the interest rate. And also we try to also provide the loan with a, a relatively longer maturity, particularly for an infrastructure project. But uh, at the same time, how can we manage our financial sustainability issue, right? We are the bank, we are a development bank, but also we are the bank, right? Because uh, we, are, we are not just uh, providing grant money, right? To, we have to also uh, maintain our financial position so that we can also right later get money from the market. So this is a challenge we face. Uh, uh, and also, I think uh, we, as we move forward, I think one of the topics we, we discuss uh, these days is how we can uh, do more PPP project, how we can catalyze more private sector money, right, in the, in the rural area, in the agriculture sector. I think uh, Mr. Hongbo, maybe later, he will talk about how the IFAD will, will do this. I used to be an uh, autonomy governor for IFAD. I work very closely with the president, uh, Hongbo. Uh, you know, so I, 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 but I know this is a big challenge for all the MBB, not just for, for the IFAD, for World Bank, ADB, and many other IFAD, I, I can tell you. For us also, right, we are, we are trying to do more also. Uh, PPP project for the, for the, for our sectors, uh, agriculture uh, sector. So, and also we, we, I, another thing I think we need to do more is how we can uh, get more, you know, uh, 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 technology, uh, particularly the, the new technology to support agriculture modernization process. Uh, we used to provide support with our money, you know, and but now these days the people, government has more and more importance to the innovation innovation driven kind of growth and uh, we needed to develop more smarter about agriculture sectors so how can we you know uh, combine our operations with the with the input of more technology skills this is something maybe i think uh, for this is a, uh, we all need to think about for uh, for the uh, for the public development bank and also for the uh, you know uh, for for everybody right so i think this is a, another point i want to make that as we also, uh, we, we talk a lot is about how we support more uh, money for more uh, provide more support for the for the for the uh, 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 you know this small business you know small uh, holders uh, small agro business SMEs and you know micro enterprises you know you know you know in the sector. So this is also a very big topic. I think they, they deserve our more support. But how can we do that? Uh, you know, as we do, how can we manage the risk? Uh, how can we develop more bankable project, and that so that uh, we, we can we can we can provide more, so that they can enjoy more uh, financial inclusive services, right? From from us. So another one also I want to mention is that uh, and uh, the, the green development, climate financing. These days people talk a lot. How we can in, you know increase our uh, financing for the for the for the adaptation and the mitigation, right? And uh, I used to work for the uh, ADB for many years as a vice president. You know, I, I, I know that, uh, you know, many MDB try to set up target, right, for annual lending, which could be allocated for the climate financing. But for us, you know, we are doing more and more green financing. I mentioned to you, we issue a green bond. We, do, we try to do more green project. Actually, we already done a lot, you know, so in, in my bank. But, but I, we, we support a lot of environmental ecological projects, including the, the rural ecological environmental project, and also big river protection, like Young's River, Yellow River, and, you know, protection. Uh, so, uh, but in the coming days, how can we design our project with the, with the component to support the adaptation and the mitigation? This is maybe, um, you know, we, maybe we, we needed to, to, to learn from each other. We needed to talk more on you know, this. And uh, we need to get maybe more support, right, from from the from others. So I feel so these are maybe very important things. Maybe and also, of course, lastly, I want to mention that we do need to uh, scale up with the, the cooperation coordination among many of us, uh, global development bank, regional development, bank, national development bank. Uh, we all need to work together uh, so we we can learn from each other, learn you know the best practice and knowledge sharing. We should do more knowledge sharing. We should do more capacity building and also more, maybe we can do more joint research also. 
So I think uh, uh, I think MDB like the Efada and other they should also do more the the, the uh, operations in agriculture sector. I know they focus on the infrastructure so much these days, physical, particularly physical one. But how about you know uh, you know future as they uh, implement their strategy for 2030, right? As they try to support more efforts for the SDG goals, they should do more, right? Uh, operations uh, for the for the agricultural sectors. Uh, I think this is something, of course, we are working very closely with MBBs already in, uh, in their operation in China. In the future, we will talk to them how we can work together uh, you know, in China and also maybe in other uh, developing countries. So maybe uh, maybe I should stop here. Uh, maybe I can come back later if, if necessary. Well, you've, Thank you've you. done an excellent job touching on a number of the issues that actually came in through the participant chat box. I think actually, as I look through the questions, you really touched on quite a few of them. And of course, this is a very brief conversation where we can't necessarily dig into the details, but I'm actually quite impressed with how much terrain we've covered. We've talked about some of the challenges, uh, as well as I think each of you have done a very excellent job of reframing where you want to go with those challenges, whether that's technical assistance, increasing or changing the way you bring in new types of private sector finance, uh, looking to a wide array of partners in region and beyond. So I think we've, we've heard quite a lot of different approaches. And of course, with 450, I think the number is public development banks uh, in the world, all very different it's really not about the single silver bullet. It's really about that portfolio solution. So, so we've had a really wonderful overview from our panelists, which um, very much would like to, to thank each of you and uh, for sharing your experience and your insight with us today. Uh, I'm sure we could talk about this all day long and I know we would all like to, but I think what we need to do now uh, is actually uh, switch gears and turn to our closing speaker, Mr. Gilbert Humbo president of the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Mr. Humbo, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. Good morning to all of you and good, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm so um, pleased to see um, uh, some old friends, uh, uh, including the, the vice president of the uh, Agriculture Bank, uh, Agricultural Development Bank of, uh, of, of, of China and the uh, um, this is uh, Benunia from uh, the um, Asia uh, Farmers Organization. So uh, I'm very um, glad uh, of the um, opportunity to draw some conclu conclusion from our from this uh, richer discussion that uh, um, we have heard from our panel the panelists. Uh, we all agree that public development bank have a critical role in making the shift. To more inclusive and sustainable food system. Uh, in particular, they can leverage resources and expand collaboration with the, uh, the private sector. Achieving the first two sustainable development goals, i.e. to end poverty uh, uh, and uh, zero hunger by uh, 2030, while delivering on the Paris Agreement, might seem a huge task. But as we have heard today, curbing climate change and leaving no one behind are not competing objectives. They are in fact complementary. In our panel discussion, we heard some exceptional examples of public development bank delivering novel ways to do exactly that. And I know we have all benefited from the insights from uh, Mr. Wenkai of the Agriculture Development Bank of China, um, uh, Mrs. Penunia that I just mentioned from the uh, Asian Farmers Association, and uh, as well as from the, uh, the CEO of the uh, Agriculture Bank of Niger, um, uh, Mr. Mossi uh, Mama, que je salue. Uh, dear uh, colleagues, as the recent series, uh, uh, series report shows, we can still achieve zero hunger by 2030, and we can do it while doubling the income of the estimated 2 billion people who depend on the world's small-scale farms while also limiting agricultural emissions uh, in line with the Paris uh, 
climate agreement. We also know the level of commitment and action it will take. The ambition is within reach. If donor governments spend an extra 14 billion a year until 2030, according to this report. Low and middle income countries will also need to mobilize from their own budget an additional 19 billion a year to achieve these ob objectives by 2030. The collective support of public development banks in long term investment and policy engagement is therefore crucial. The joint statement of the Financing Common Agriculture Cluster that we convene um, in the lead up to this summit, I think that joint statement is going to help us to build momentum. The cluster has pledged to continue working together and with the global coalition of all public development banks that IFAD is pleased to join. With a positive credit rating, IFAD will continue assembling and channeling diversified financial resources for more impactful, sustainable, and inclusive investment. Our new programs for crowding in private sector and climate financing for poor rural people, especially young youth and women, will provide entry point for new partnership and new ways of doing business at scale. When we work together, we achieve more than the sum of our parts. The Great Green Wall Initiative is an excellent example. It plans to restore 100 million hectare of land across the Sahel to store 250 million tons of CO2 and to create 10 million jobs in rural areas. In partnership with France, the UNCCD, the GCF, the World Bank, the European Union, and many others, IFAD is participating in the design of, the 10, of a 10 billion Great Green World Accelerator, uh, hopefully um, to be finalized and announced uh, during the One Planet Summit in France uh, in next January. Ladies and gentlemen, we know the challenges. Many of us have tested concrete solutions. Now we need to scale them up we need to scale them up. Partnerships, including those we are forging here and continuous innovation, particularly with the financial sector, will be key to unlocking opportunities, building a more resilient and more resilient work and ensuring more equitable societies. If we learn from one another and use these tools well, we can achieve the SDGs and turn the ambition of the Paris Agreement into concrete reality. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Hungbo, for so clearly laying out the opportunity and the path forward. Um, this session has covered a lot of terrain in a very short period of time. We've heard from the panelists that we need to reach every producer and we need to support every producer in improving their productivity and increasing their market access so that they can participate in financial systems. We've learned that we need to target the weak links in the system and that there are real benefits from an integrated business model. We've heard that we need to double down on sustainable development and climate resilience themed financial services and that exchange among public development banks will be a great opportunity and something that's very needed in terms of both meeting rural challenges and maintaining institutional financial viability. So it's very clear 
that the Agriculture and Rural Development Cluster has plenty to work on together. Um, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I hope everyone who's tuned in has enjoyed it as well. We are now at the end of this event. Hopefully we are more informed and more inspired to gain the benefits of enhanced collaboration. So thank you to everyone who has, particip who has participated with us today. Best wishes and goodbye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Good day. Bye.